Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandor Gaming, and I have finally done it. I have streamed down the deck list. I have made Gold Pride Punk Goblin Riders with the XYZ Armored Shark Package into 40 cards. No exaggeration, I have thinned out the deck to the point that I've made all these engines work perfectly and cohesively into a 40 card monstrosity so let's get into it so if you don't know i'm a huge gold pride punk fan it is my favorite deck of all time i have an entire playlist showing the different versions and tech cards and my performances in this deck it's my favorite deck of all time i've been playing it for the last two years ever since punks came out in the tcg it's been my favorite deck of all time so I have been play testing and theory crafting to make it the best possible deck it ever has. And last week we came up with a new breakthrough in the XYZ armor package with the brand new shark support that we're getting in Rage of the Abyss. That being the new Levineer uh, XYZ, adding even more interruption to our field and more consistency by adding back the Captain Carry back into our extra deck. Uh, I made a whole video discussing the nuances of that new card, so you can check that out in the comments, but, or just check out my playlist. But uh, that's not really what this video is about today. This video is about the new deck list. So the previous deck list, I think it was like 48 cards, and that was because we were playing a large cross-out package. We are playing three cross-outs, one nib, one droll, one ash, one imperm, it was a whole bunch of hand traps, and I still think that version is viable, and I think it's still very, very powerful, but I know a lot of people are put off when they see deck lists that are more than 40 cards, so I felt like since I wanted to streamline the deck, I really usually play more than 40. It's weird for me to play a 40 card list exactly, but I felt like I should do it, so I put myself to the metal, and I theory crafted, and I jammed the cards together, to see if all these engines can come to a 40 card pile and I was able to do it. So this is the brand new deck list for anyone who wants to keep it in a 40 card list. But if you want to be more adventurous this deck can be a 50 card to 60 card pile. You can fit a lot of different engines in here. A lot of different hand traps and a lot of different uh, really really powerful cards. To just make it a lot easier depending on your meta, uh, meta matchup at your locals. This deck, one of the reasons why it's my favorite, is because you can just build it however you want to fit into the meta seam. So, I feel like these are just the basic ratios for the Punk, Gold Pride, and the Goblin Riders. I feel like their ratios haven't really changed. They're just more condensed down. So, let's talk about it. So, first things first, we're going to talk about the largest engine in the deck, that being the Punks. That this is a Punk deck. Uh, we're th playing three Ogre Dance, three Foxy Tune, three Ziamen. Uh, one of each of Sherkusai, Wagon, um, what was it called, Madam Spider, and uh, Deer Note. Uh, you're probably wondering when it comes to the main deck monsters, why we're playing Ogre Dance at three. I had to discuss this, and every time I make a video, Ogre Dance is a one and a half card starter. It gets you to your Zeomit. It gets you to your Foxy Tune. It's a hell of a card. Please play this card at three. It makes your deck way more consistent. That's my end of the discussion on that. Ogre Dance is a three of. Uh, when it comes to the other ones, uh, Sher Kusai, Zia, uh, what's called Mam Spider, Wagon, and Deer Note have been staple one ofs. You just want to turbo them out throughout your combo and allow you to access some really, really powerful traps and spells, which is just really essential for the deck. Uh, the Gold Pride uh, ratios have not changed. We're playing three carry, uh, three Leon. Uh, one of each of Rollerballer and, of course, Nitro Head. And then, of course, to uh, Better Luck Next Times and to Start Your Engines. I feel like this is just the basic ratio. Uh, start Your Engine, you could cut it down to one, but I always like it as a two of because if you open it in your opening hand, it's not a once per turn, so you can search it throughout the combo and have two of them. And it's just such a powerful card. It's two interruptions and one trap card. So I feel like you should be playing it. It's just a really great card. I think two is the perfect ratio. As for the reason why we're playing uh, two better luck next time instead of three. Is because honestly we it's so easy to access throughout the combo. That you don't ever really want to open it. You kind of just want to combo into the card. Which is pretty great. Not to mention 
you won't have enough life points by the time you go through the entire punk combo and and you activate one of these uh, uh continuous spells once that you really don't need three not to mention we play so many traps in the back row that you don't want to have your spell and trap zones clogged because you are playing five traps in this deck because this deck throughout its combo searches out these traps it's weird to say but this is a combo deck that ends on five real back row which is like the only combo deck that actually does that uh, like I said, it, it's going to make like a huge, disgusting board on field, and then it's going to have five back rows set. It's going to be like, wait a minute, not only do I got to deal with like this stupid freaking bullshit that's on the field, but I also got to deal with like five unknown back row that could have completely wiped me out. Exactly. Uh, let's also talk about the uh, Goblin Biker combo. So the Goblin Bikers, their ratio is perfect. Uh, this is a pure build. You, of course, be playing multiple play sets of each one. But because they're an engine in this deck, all you need is one Doug the Assaulter, uh, one Merciless Snake, and, of course, the one Boom Mac. Those are the only three you need in the main deck. And then you only need one of the spells, the Grand Entrance, because it's the card you search off Doug. Which is just a really, really great card. And, of course, you are playing the extra deck, Captain Carry. And, of course, you're also playing Doug, uh, the Babonga, in the extra deck as well. They're just really, really great cards that add a lot more consistency and power to this deck. Any two little threes is full Goblin Biker, Goblin uh, combo, which leads on to a Utopic F-Zero. Not to mention access to the Gold Pride cards. Not to mention access to the XYZ full armor package, which is pretty insane, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, we also are, of course, playing uh, a couple of one ofs in this deck. We're playing both one wheeler and one tracker because they're both once per turns. Uh, they're searchable in our combo, and you're never really mad to see them in hand. They're just level 3 extenders that help you play into a board. Not to mention, they're just really, really good at chain blocking if you end up using them as synchro material. One can chain block by giving it a synchro monster plus 600 attack. And the other one allows you to pop a monster on field, which is really, really cool. Uh, we're also playing, of course, the one called by the grave and the one ghost ogre. Uh, ghost ogre is the only hand trap that I kept from the... Uh, cross out package just because it is searchable in our deck and we already have access to Madame spider earlier in the combo or we already had access to either wheeler or tracker earlier in the combo we don't need a level three extender then we can search ghost ogre instead because it is a killer against a lot of the decks in the meta right now especially decks that revolve around continuous spells uh especially like you bell uh, Ghost Ogre in their continuous spell is like a godsend against that deck. Same thing goes for against Tempai. You Ghost Ogre their field spell when they try to search with it. That's also just a really, really good game ender. And it's just a really, really powerful card in this format. So I'm glad our deck can search it. And just a really, really great card in general. Uh, that's basically it for the main deck. Nitro Head has never left the deck. Uh, he's just really, really good at giving your opponent a token, so you don't have to deal with Evenly Match, Lightning Storm, uh, Cash Tira Monsters in general. It's just a really, really powerful card, and of course, we gotta play it. Uh, I know some people have cut it from their Gold Pride lists, but I think it's just really good. Uh, let's talk about the extra deck now. So the extra deck is a whole bunch of nonsense. It's so good. Uh, first things first, we'll talk about the Synchros. We're, of course, playing one second game Punisher, one Amazing Dragon, so we can Synchro Summon him on your opponent's turn and bounce their opponent's entire field. Uh, one Berserk Tengi, because it's an easy Synchro you can make that just banishes the card. Not to mention, it also helps you push for a game. It's just one of the best Synchros in the game, especially since we don't play Lynx and Boral Savage is banned. Uh, it's just a really, really great Synchro in general. Uh, of course, we are also playing... Uh, What's it called? Uh, the level 8 synchro for the punks. That being uh, Punk the Jam. Uh, he's just a really, really great card. It searches any level 3 psychic in the combo. Not to mention, it just it's such a great card. It must be one of the best support cards we've ever gotten in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! For the punks. And I gotta say, it is a great one of. We're also playing for our last synchro, the new Whitewoods. This comes out in the new Illusion set. 
Basically, it's a Book of Eclipse on your opponent's field. We're no longer playing uh, the Star Leon anymore. Instead, we're playing this guy because this guy is literally just a better interruption. Even though Star Leon does pop a monster, which is pretty solid, it does require you to have less life points than your opponent. And there really is enough, not enough room in the extra to play Star Leon. Instead, we're playing this card just to basically... Uh, Book of Moon, everything on field. It doesn't Book of Moon our monsters, it just Book of Moon's our opponents, which is just pretty insane. Uh, let's talk about the uh, fusions now. Of course, we're playing the one Amazing Carp and the one Rollerballer or uh, Pinballer. Uh, it's just really, really insane fusion that just absorbs like two to three monsters onto the field, which is incredible. And then, of course, uh, Amazing Carp is just great for the punk combos. It is very essential. The reason why we actually play the punks because accessing it is like a game ender. It's just so much advantage off one fusion. It's such a good card. Uh, for our XYZs, which is the majority of the extra deck now, of course, we are playing the three XYZs when it comes to the XYZ armor package. That being uh, Fortress and, of course, the big boy himself, the Mr. Exorber Man. Uh, we're also, instead of playing Torpedo, we are playing Levy in the air. Now, this is the brand new card coming out of Rage of Abyss. This new XYZ replaces uh, Torpedo. So, instead of we going for a draw one play, instead, now we are going for a search, a really, really powerful uh, trap card that's basically Blackout for the deck. Not to mention, it allows us to recycle carry for the extra deck when we make carry using Utopic F0. So we're also playing the Utopic F0 package, which is very, very easy to access in this deck. And then finally, we're of course playing Captain Carry. Uh, she's just one of the best XYZs in the entire game. And then finally, we are also playing for our last final card in the extra deck. Uh, I decided to go for the Insect Girl. Uh, she's pretty decent. She's basically a quick effect end perm, but she is a win effect, so she can miss timing. And she only affects monsters on field, so she doesn't affect cards in hand or in grave, which really, really sucks. But she is honestly the best XYZ rank 3 we can make. There is an uh, idea to play Gossip Shadow back in the list. The only issue I don't like about Gossip Shadow is that, yes, it does change the effect that we both draw one. But I don't like my opponent drawing cards, so honestly, I kind of don't like it. Not to mention, if you uh, do end up playing Draw Lockburn in the cross out package and you draw your opponent, you can no longer activate the Gossip Shadow because Gossip Shadow says we both draw one, but Draw says we are unable to draw, uh, draw so you can't actually use that card effectively. But, uh,. That is it for the main deck and the extra. I'm really happy with the results of this list. It is very consistent and very scary. Uh, if you want to boost up the deck list, of course you can. Uh, like I said, this is just a 40 card version. If you want to make it a 48 card or 46 card or even 44 card, you can absolutely do that. There's plenty of engines or like tech cards you can play to ultimately boost up the power and like maybe the protection for your combos if you're really worried about nibiru or if you're really really worried about droll then you can of course play these packages to help protect you and help go from there so that's it for the list i hope you all enjoy and i do have some videos for you all so stay tuned for that take care bye bye
Hello, hello.